I hope everybody had as much fun uh, with that beautiful weather skiing Beaver Creek as I did today. It was uh, really a great, uh, a fantastic day. Not as good as Monday following the, the dump of uh, powder snow we had, but it was still pretty darn good. Um, I'm up here in, to some extent in false premises because I am not an oncologist. I know very little about prostate cancer. I deal with prostatitis and BPH, and my job is to keep patients away from uh, you guys that are interested in prostate cancer. Can we have the first questions put up there, please? So this is the question I'd like to start because we're going to talk about prostatitis, inflammation, and prostate cancer. What I'd like you to know is, that if you'd answer this, the presence of inflammation on negative, at least for prostate cancer, uh, prostate biopsy predicts, one, greater BPH and clinical prostatitis symptom severity, BPH and clinical prostatitis symptom progression, increased risk of developing BPH and prostatitis symptoms, increased risk of developing prostatitis symptoms. Okay, can we drop the answer? Okay, so I have um, some, this is really good. This is really good because 0% got the right answer. So my talk's going to be worth it here. Uh, next, uh, that usually do, never, ever happens, but it means that you guys really don't know this field about inflammation and prostate cancer. Okay, the presence of inflammation on initial prostate biopsy predicts the following on a subsequent biopsy. In other words, you have inflammation on your first biopsy, no prostate cancer. What's the second biopsy going to show? An increased incident risk and increased severity of prostate cancer, a lower incident risk but increased severity of prostate cancer, higher incident risk but decreased severity of prostate cancer, or lower incident risk and decreased severity of prostate cancer. Could you answer that now? Okay, well, you know, uh, about a third of the uh, audience knew the right answer. And, but we don't know if it's uh, number one, number three, or number four, but you will in about 10 minutes. So, like I s said, the um, prostate cancer, the bottom left there, is not really my area of expertise. But I do know what a normal prostate looks like. I've worked in BPH for over 25, 30 years, and prostate inflammation is what I'm very interested in, is relationship to prostatitis and other diseases of the prostate. Another disease, and the, that disease of the prostate, of course, is prostate cancer. Next slide, please. Oh, I've got it here. So, I'm going to jump right in, not talk about prostatitis, because I only have a, a, a small amount of time, but some year I'll come and talk about clinical prostatitis, prostate cancer, and whatnot. But what I want to talk about is a study that you're all aware of, certainly oncologists are, the REDUCE study. It really didn't do that, make that much of a big bang in um, prostate cancer prevention. It did not get the FDA indication. So what use is it? Well, it turns out to be a fantastic study to predict who is going to get prostate cancer, and if they get it, how severe it is. It is actually the best longitudinal study we will ever have to evaluate prostate inflammation and implications for BPH, because we collected IC, uh, uh, IPSS symptom score, chronic prostatitis, because we collected information on the chronic prostatitis symptom index, and prostate cancer, because everybody in this study had a mandated biopsy, either at one for either for cause or a mandated biopsy at two years and four years. They all had a biopsy to, uh, to start with, and we were able to um, induce, uh, twist GSK's arm to say that it is important to figure out this story of inflammation and prostate cancer. So we were able to determine whether the patients had a normal uh, prostate, whether they had acute inflammation or chronic inflammation, and we also determined whether they had mild, moderate, or marked inflammation. We also determined the extent of prostate inflammation across all the uh, six to ten cores that they had during this, uh, the initial uh, biopsy. And if you remember, the patients had biopsy for cause, likely PSA, but the biopsy was negative for prostate cancer. I'm going to jump into two conclusions that we reached in terms of the benign study without going into the details, but if you had inflammation at uh, the first biopsy, it did not predict whether or not you had clinical prostatitis, but it did predict if you had 
chronic prostate symptoms, that you would have progression of those symptoms. Similarly, with BPH, it did the same thing. If you had BPH uh, in terms of a large prostate and IPSS symptom score in the BPH range, and you had inflammation, it predicted progression of BPH. But let's get into, so the bottom line is inflammation of the prostate is predictive of progression in patients suffering from both BPH and prostatitis. Now, clinical prostatitis, I don't want to get into that, but patients with clinical prostatitis, seeing urologists, have a higher risk of being diagnosed with prostate cancer. And all the studies suffer from the bias of over-urology utilization. Once the prostatitis patient gets into the urologist's hands, not only is he concerned that he has prostate cancer, he's going to get PSA testing, and he's more apt to get a biopsy. So it, it is an unlikely a real uh, thing. Histological prostate can cancer, we know from other cancers such as cervical, esophageal, gastric, that inflammation is involved in the pathogenesis and etiology of those particular cancers. What about prostate? Well, certainly there's a lot of evidence, particularly the association in histological sections and autopsy series, of the close association between inflammation and prostate cancer, that this could be the case. I've, uh, I've been to a lot of prostate cancer meetings, and invariably somebody throws up a slide like this. I've always wanted to do that because I'm in sort of a simple field. So finally, I'm at a prostate cancer meeting, and I can explain the theory of why inflammation can cause prostate cancer. And this is great. Now, it's kind of interesting because in reality, it looks to me like this is evolution from the bottom of the ocean up to the uh, air. But all these things are very important and they make absolutely no sense to me, but this is the explanation of why inflammation causes prostate cancer. So what we wanted to do is take the reduce biopsies and see whether or not inflammation in the initial biopsy and the extent and the severity of the inflammation plays a role of whether or not they develop prostate cancer over the four years of the study. So the results, I'm just going to throw them right out here. For acute uh, uh, inflammation, and this is yes or no, they had acute inflammation or no inflammation, there was a decreased risk of having prostate cancer in subsequent biopsies. With chronic inflammation, it was even more significant. Conclusion of this first analysis we did is baseline acute and chronic inflammation were both independently associated with a lower prostate cancer risk. Well, we need more information of that because we have to have concordance all the way around. So what we did is we looked at the extent of baseline uh, acute and chronic prostate inflammation, and we tried to associate that with the incidence of prostate cancer and repeat biopsy. Now, this is a little bit uh, complicated, but as you can see, we can see the number, uh, the, the percentage of the cores with, uh, pros uh, with inf acute inflammation, chronic inflammation, and um, we, these are the uh, PSA, prostate volumes and everything, but when we actually look at the actual study, what we see is there is a very signif there, there a significant uh, association between the extent of inflammation and a lower risk of prostate cancer. Uh, if we look at the chronic inflammation, I've got two buttons here, we also see a significant uh, association between the extent of chronic inflammation seen on the biopsies and whether or not the patient has prostate cancer at two and four years. So the, ex the extent of baseline acute and chronic prostate inflammation was again independently associated with a lower prostate cancer risk. And in all these studies, we did uh, account for prostate volume, we did account for PSA, we did account for age. Now what about inflammation and tumor volume? That's something else we're interested in. And again, um, I gotta go back. This is the data, but basically the overall tumor volume, the number of positive cores, the percentage of cores involved, and the percentage of tumor involvement were all independently related to um, acute, no, to a chronic inflammation, not acute inflammation. In other words, if you had chronic inflammation, you had less volume if you actually were diagnosed with cancer, okay? So the ones that were diagnosed with cancer and had inflammation had a 
reduced volume than those that had no inflammation. So baseline chronic inflammation was associated with lower prostate cancer volume. These are the patients that actually got the prostate cancer. What about prostate atrophy? We looked at that as well. With or without inflammation is again associated with a lower risk of prostate cancer, atrophy alone, inflammation alone, both together. And we see a significant, both on univariant and multivariant analysis, uh, decreased risk of prostate cancer. What about grade? If you have acute inflammation, you have a decreased chance of having high grade, eight, nine, 10, prostate cancer compared to those um, with no inflammation, but it wasn't statistically significant. For chronic inflammation, it was statistically and perhaps even clinically significant difference. Certainly the odds ratio appeared to show a sig significant benefit of having inflammation on the first biopsy, subsequently getting cancer, and don't forget you have a lower risk to develop cancer, and when you get cancer, you have a lower volume and you have uh, predicted a lower, um, a lower grade. Atrophy showed the same, same findings. So the bottom line of this whole analysis that I get a chance to present today on inflammation in the REDUCE study is that this is going to be the largest and longest database to look at inflammation and BPH, prostatitis, and prostate cancer outcomes ever in my lifetime. We will never get thousands of patients with biopsies, with no cancer, and then find out who gets cancer subsequently along the four-year time zone. And in this, we were not able to show our hypothesis. Our hypothesis was that inflammation would predict, number one, increased risk of prostate cancer, and two, increased severity of prostate cancer. We were not able to show that in this particular study, and in fact, we only showed that existing prostate inflammation predicted a lower risk and severity of prostate cancer. Does the literature really support this? Well, the literature is terrible. The, the actual studies that were done, a lot of them were associated studies. There were studies of 30 patients, the largest being a little over a, 150 patients. They were short-term studies. They were all uncontrolled. They weren't controlled like the reduced study. But when you do a meta-analysis of uh, two-year biopsy studies, that's only they had to have at least two years data to fit into this meta-analysis, what we found is that inflammation on prostate needle biopsy on the first biopsy was associated with a lower prostate cancer risk over a two-year period in this meta-analysis. So without chronic inflammation, the incidence of prostate cancer was 20% in the meta-analysis. If there was inflammation, chronic inflammation on the initial biopsy, it uh, was 13 and 12% for those with mild and moderate inflammation. So the, um, the odds ratio was very clinically significant uh, for this. So what are the cl clinical implications of our analyses of inflammation in the REDUCE study? Well, if for the benign conditions, of which I was initially interested in, the presence of inflammation on prostate biopsy predicts BPH and prostatitis progression if they had those at the time of biopsy. If a, one of your patients on biopsy, has inflammation on prostate biopsy. It predicts a lower prostate cancer risk, and that's a lower incident risk. And if they develop, if they do have prostate cancer, it predicts a decreased or lesser severity. Thank you very much.